America. I got good news and I got bad news over the weekend. Good news is Congress finally did something. Bad news is Congress finally did something. Congress has hammered out the most far-reaching rescue package of America's financial system since FDR's The New Deal. Yeah, who would have seen this one coming? President Bush has said in the past, oh, I'm not going to sign that. Now he's flipped on that one. He's decided that he's going to give the U.S. Treasury unchecked authority to prop up the giant mortgage lenders, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Together, Fannie and Freddie own or guarantee half of this country's $12 trillion stock of home loans. Oh, goody. So here's the point tonight. Hard work and responsibility? Please, give me a break. Borrow big? To hell with paying it back. The government's going to bail us all out. It's free money. And here's how I got there. This, uh, this scheme by Congress and the president is aimed at providing relief for over 400,000 struggling homeowners who are at the risk of losing their homes. I am not without compassion, but I am against get-out-of-jail-free cards for people who buy things that they can't afford. Why should people like you or me, who pay our bills, uh, why should we continue to pay our bills when our government is just going to give out handouts to people who don't pay their bills? You can't use public money to save private property. I know, I know. That's always the part that seems to get lost in the fine print. When the government spends money helping Joe Schmo pay for the house that he can't afford, the government is writing a check with your money. At the same time, the geniuses in Washington made this reckless move. They also raised the ceiling on the U.S. national debt by nearly a trillion dollars. Think about that. That's like... Um, you know, calling up, you know, Amex and saying, hey, I got, woo, do I have a gambling problem? I am addicted to gambling like crazy. I've already maxed out my card due to losses in Atlantic City, but it was just the, I was unlucky. I was on the verge. Will you please raise my limit because I just got a ticket to Vegas, baby. Now imagine that they don't hang up the phone. Imagine that they go, oh, you're going to Vegas. Hang on just a second. Bill, raise the credit limit on this Yahoo. It sounds crazy. But that's what Washington has just done. So America, here is what you need to know tonight. Back in deadbeats and the banks that loan money to them makes it harder for the rest of us to get loans. Wait until I tell you what's going on in the small business sector here in about 10 minutes. And when the ceiling of the national debt goes up, that puts our national credit rating in jeopardy. When our credit rating suffers, interest rates go up, the dollar takes yet another hit. That hurts you when you try to buy a house or milk. So while your neighbor bought that four-bedroom colonial when really they could only afford a two-bedroom trailer, you just got stuck paying the difference. Like I said, I am not without compassion for those who need help. But charity is for churches, not the federal government. The marketplace must be allowed to function without government bailouts. If you got cheated by your bank, sue the pants off of that bank. And the government should help you put them in jail. But if you or the greedy bankers bit off more than you can chew, oh, sucks to be you, doesn't it? Stephen Moore writes editorials on economics for the Wall Street Journal and Peter Schiff is the uh, uh, president of Europac and the author of Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse, which I, I love the name of that one, Peter. Uh, Stephen, let me start with you. Free lunch is for everybody. Man, I want to work hard now. Yeah, we should call it the United States of bailout because we have now bailed out uh, virtually all of the people who have bad mortgages, all of the banks. And, you know, Glenn, I was in Washington over the weekend watching this debate. There was nobody at the table representing the interests of the taxpayers. One of the reasons that they were so eager to give this blank check to these big housing behemoths, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, is guess what, Glenn? Guess what? they have huge packs and they give money to all these politicians. Oh, yeah. So all of this money that's going to be going out and bail out to Fannie and Freddie, a lot of that's going to come right back to the politicians yeah. and campaign contributions. You can't make this stuff up, Glenn. Oh, it, it, <laughs> we, we, we've truly been sold out. I really, truly believe we've been sold out. Peter, I, I am so sick of hearing the phrase, oh, well, they're too big to fail. I mean, look at me. Nobody's ever said I'm too big to fail, nor should they. No, you should fail. 
But yeah, but they're too big to bail. That's the problem. <laughs> and it's not the taxpayers. The, these guys don't have the guts to raise taxes. It's wage earners. It's people who have dollar savings. They're going to destroy our currency. That's what's going to happen. You know, when I wrote that book, Crash Proof, not only did I predict that Freddie and Fannie would fail, but I also predicted that the government would bail them out and that the economic consequences of the bailout are far worse than letting them fail. Okay, what are the economic co consequences? The, the dollar is one. Well, first of all, you've got all the moral hazards that you talked about. But look, for right now, Freddie and Fannie guarantee 5.2 trillion in mortgages. Based on this new regulation, probably in a year or two, they'll guarantee seven or eight or nine trillion. It's going to be a bigger problem. These mortgages are still bad. The houses are not worth anything near yeah. what people paid for them. Steven. And a lot of the debt you know, isn't even from houses. It's from all the cars and SUVs and vacations that people charge to their home equity. Well, there's two other outrageous things here. One is that, you know, we've just uh, passed out these big uh, loan guarantees for a lot of these bad mortgages that the banks hold right now, Glenn. Now, what do you think? the banks are going to do. They're going to take the absolute worst loans that they have in their portfolio, the ones that are most likely to default, and they're going to say, here, Uncle Sam, here, take these loans. And so we're going to be stuck with huge costs. Here's the other outrage. You mentioned that, that the federal budget deficit is going to $490 billion, a record next year. Glenn, that does not even include any of the cost of this bailout. I know. So we could of be talking not. about a trillion dollars. I know, I know. Okay, so uh, there's something else, and please tell me that uh, I'm insane and I read this wrong. In this bill, there's like a $7,500 tax incentive for first-time home buyers? Yeah. I mean, what? we don't need to... We don't need to encourage people to buy homes, and all this does is prop up home prices because if people have tax credits, then they can bid more for homes. It benefits the seller. It doesn't benefit the buyer. It just means that he overpays because now he has a government credit. We need to let home prices collapse. They never should have gotten to the levels they got to, but unfortunately, lower home prices yeah. expose all the losses. You okay. know, Peter, there's one, one other aspect of this that's outrageous, is that they also, at the same time they're bailing out these agencies, they increase the amount of loans that they can now uh, insure, Glenn. So oh, now homes over $650,000 can get, get loan uh, guarantees. And by the way, this program is supposed to help moderate income home buyers. How many moderate income home buyers can afford a $650,000 house? Me, so that's, me, just, me, that's just the mortgage. That's me, not the me, whole value of the house. Let me, ask you, let me ask both of you this question. I saw a story today about Amex and that Amex, and Amex generally has the creme de la creme for uh, people who have money and they have a credit card because you have to pay it off in 30 days. They say they're starting to see the people being 30 days late or longer uh, start to, to rise up and people are spending less. Well, if I've got Visa, I know the average person, I mean, how do you afford the gas um, that you're putting into your car. If you've been living paycheck to paycheck, what you've most likely done is you've taken your visa out and went, I have no other choice, man. I'm going to run that up to the max sure. because of the price of gas. Well, sure. when those things start to fail, Visa, MasterCard, uh, American Express, does the government just not come in again and say, too big to fail? That's, that's the next bailout. And, you know, the incentive to the average American is max out every credit card you have because you might as well go out with a bang, well, especially if there's a bailout. Stephen, and, you know, that's the problem. <laughs> you know, we spent too much money. We spent money we didn't have. We've got to stop doing that. We've got to have a recession. But the right. government doesn't want the recession. It wants to keep reflating the bubble. It wants us to go deeper into debt. Okay, they're, guys, they're I, causing I, the recession with their big overspending and their debt. Washington is causing this recession. Well, that's why, you know what? That's why people have been sending me the pitchforks. Look at this one. It's handmade. Oh, yeah. I love it. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Coming up uh, as defaulting home.